To position the abductor spars for an IM nailing in the lateral position for an operative left leg procedure, begin by loosening the knob below the A rosette and set the A joint to position 7, then relock the A rosette handle. Next, loosen the knob below the B rosette and set the B joint to position 1, then relock the B rosette handle. Adjust the patient's left and right leg abductor spars using the control handles as shown here. Refer to the illustrations on page 18 of the OT table setup guide or position spars as clinically required. Reverse these settings for an operative right leg procedure. The tabletop can slide in a transverse fashion from left to right to accommodate patient transfer onto and off of the table, to expose the surgical site, or to expose the anatomy for C arm imaging purposes. The tabletop must be leveled before manual unlatch buttons are available for use. First, ensure the head section is level and manually adjust as needed. Next, press the level tilt button on the hand control to ensure that the tabletop is level. The preferred method to translate the tabletop is through the illuminated buttons on the side of the tabletop. Press and hold the manual green unlatch button located on either side of the tabletop and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. Alternatively, the tabletop can be translated by unlatching the lateral slide through the buttons on the primary hand control. Press and hold the green unlatch button on the hand control and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. The table is now ready for patient transfer. Execute patient transfer using facility protocols for safe patient handling and ensure even patient weight distribution. Once the patient is positioned safely on the tabletop surface, adjust the tabletop by repeating the instructions to obtain the desired lateral tabletop position. The centered position is typical for anterior hip cases, whereas left justified or right justified positions are typical for an operative left or right leg fracture or trauma procedure, such as hip pinnings or IM nailings. Refer to pages 8 to 21 of the OT table setup guide to verify the appropriate tabletop slide position shown in the illustrations. Preparing the OT table for lateral positioning is much different than most other supine orthopedic cases. Start prepping the table by installing an accessory spar clamp on the short end of the abductor spar of the non-operative leg spar. Position the accessory spar clamp so that the hole is on the outside of the spar. You may need to readjust the A and B rosette positions temporarily to get access to install the spar clamp. Next, install the patient transfer board and secure its two thumb screws on the left and right side. Install the hip rest by aligning its mounting bracket with corresponding slot on the OT1000 series table as shown. Insert the hip rest and assure it is fully seated. Tighten the knob. Adjust the height of the L-shaped bracket on the operative leg abductor spar to a high height position to accommodate the operative leg when the patient is in lateral position, then re-tighten the clamp. Next, on the non-operative leg abductor spar, reset the L-shaped bracket in the spar clamp to a 90 degree horizontal position so that the L-shape is pointing toward the operative abductor spar. Also. Set the L-shaped bracket to a low height position to accommodate the non-operative leg when the patient is in lateral position. Then re-tighten the clamp. Loosen the knob below the gross traction slide and pivot the traction assembly 90 degrees and into alignment with the patient's non-operative leg. Finally, using the handles on the fine traction controls, rotate both of the traction boots on the operative and non-operative abductor spars by 90 degrees to allow the patient's feet to be secured in appropriate lateral alignment. The table is now ready for patient transfer. Execute patient transfer using facility protocols for safe patient handling and ensure even patient weight distribution. While the patient is still in a supine position, prep the patient's feet for the traction boot with the Steris traction boot disposable pad or by using local OR materials such as gauze wrap and coban. If using the Steris disposable pad, instructions for placement are located on the disposable pad itself. Once the feet are prepped, it is time to position the patient in a lateral position. Using safe patient handling practices and AORN guidelines, roll the patient onto their side into the lateral position. Next, 
A standard anesthesia arm board and a multi-position arm board should be installed to position the arms on the non-operative side of the patient in the lateral position. Before attaching the anesthesia arm board, first apply a socket clamp to the sign rail on the non-operative side of the table. Next, apply the standard anesthesia arm board to the side rail of the table on the non-operative side. Adjust as needed to accommodate proper arm position. Apply the safety strap to secure the arm. Next, mount the multi-position arm board into the socket clamp. Adjust the height and position of the arm board above patient's other arm, focusing on proper alignment and height positioning, and tighten the socket clamp to secure. Place the patient's operative side arm into the multi-position arm board and apply the safety strap to secure the arm. In preparation to pull traction when the patient is in a lateral position, the tibia and lateral counter traction device must be installed. Insert the long shaft of the tibia lateral counter traction support into the accessory spar clamp on the non-operative spar. Position the counter traction support to the height of the patient's perineum and tighten. While supporting the patient's affected leg, rotate the tibia lateral counter traction support between the patient's legs. Adjust the height of tibia lateral counter traction support to compensate for patient size and ensure patient is snug against it. Tighten the knobs of the counter traction support to secure. When setup is complete, the Steris OT table should look like this for the intended procedure. Refer to the OT table setup guide, pages 8 through 21, for written instructions on setting up the table for this orthopedic case.